Advanced Cardiac Life Support, Wikipedia Article Audio Advanced Cardiac Life Support or Advanced Cardiovascular Life Support refers to a set of clinical interventions for the urgent treatment of cardiac arrest, stroke, and other life-threatening medical emergencies, as well as the knowledge and skills to deploy those interventions. Outside North America, Advanced Life Support is used. Only qualified healthcare providers can provide ACLS, as it requires the ability to manage the person's airway, initiate for access, read and interpret electrocardiograms, and understand emergency pharmacology, these include physicians, pharmacists, dentists, advanced practice providers, respiratory therapists, nurses, paramedics and other advanced life support EMTs. Other emergency responders may also be trained. Providers Electrocardiogram interpretation Some health professionals, or even lay rescuers, may be trained in basic life support, especially cardiopulmonary resuscitation or CPR which makes up the core foundation of ACLS. When a sudden cardiac arrest occurs, immediate CPR is a vital link in the chain of survival. Another important link is early defibrillation, which has improved greatly with the widespread availability of automated external defibrillators. ACLS often starts with analyzing the patient's heart rhythms with a manual defibrillator. In contrast to an AED in BLS, where the machine decides when and how to shock a patient, the ACLS team leader makes those decisions based on rhythms on the monitor and patient's vital signs. The next steps in ACLS are insertion of intravenous lines and placement of various airway devices. Commonly used ACLS drugs, such as epinephrine and amiodarone, are then administered. The ACLS personnel quickly search for possible reversible causes of cardiac arrest. Based on their diagnosis, more specific treatments are given. These treatments may be medical such as for injection of an antidote for drug overdose, or surgical such as insertion of a chest tube for those with tension pneumothoraces or hemothoraces. The American Heart Association and the International Liaison Committee on Resuscitation performs a science review every five years and publishes an updated set of recommendations and educational materials. Following our recent changes The 2015 ACLS guidelines promoted minor tweaks and improvements to the 2010 guidelines with no major changes. Some changes included The ACLS guidelines were updated by the American Heart Association and the International Liaison Committee on Resuscitation in 2010. New ACLS guidelines focus on BLS as the core component of ACLS. FOSI also include n title CO2 monitoring as a measure of CPR effectiveness and as a measure of ROSC. Other changes include the exclusion of atropine administration for pulseless electrical activity and asystole. CPR was reordered from ABC to CAB to bring focus to chest compressions, even recommending compression-only CPR for laypersons. Guidelines the 2005 guidelines acknowledged that high-quality chest compressions and early defibrillation are the key to positive outcomes, while other typical ACLS therapies have not been shown to increase rate of survival to hospital discharge. In 2004, a study found that the basic interventions of CPR and early defibrillation and not the advanced support improved survival from cardiac arrest. The 2005 guidelines were published in circulation.
The major source for ACLS courses and textbooks in the United States is the American Heart Association, in Europe, it is the European Resuscitation Council. Most institutions expect their staff to recertify at least every two years. Many sites offer training in simulation labs with simulated code situations with a dummy. Other hospitals accept software-based courses for recertification. An ACLS provider manual reflecting the new guidelines is now available. 2015 Guidelines Stroke is also included in the ACLS course with emphasis on the stroke chain of survival. The current ACLS guidelines are set into several groups of algorithms, a set of instructions that are followed to standardize treatment, and increase its effectiveness. These algorithms usually come in the form of a flowchart, incorporating yes-slash-no type decisions, making the algorithm easier to memorize. Cardiac arrest algorithm, acute coronary syndromes algorithm, P-slash-asystole algorithm, VF slash pulseless VT algorithm, bradycardia algorithm, tachycardia algorithms, respiratory arrest algorithm, opioid emergency algorithm, suspected stroke algorithm. 2010 Guidelines The ACLS guidelines were first published in 1974 by the American Heart Association and were updated in 1980, 1986, 1992, 2000, 2005, 2010 and 2015. 2005 Guidelines Algorithms Types of algorithms Using the algorithm History In conjunction with the BLS guidelines, the update promoted the use of mobile phones to activate the emergency response system as well as notify nearby rescuers, it was recommended that emergency medical dispatchers receive better guidance on recognizing potential cardiac arrests and agonal breathing to promote more immediate CPR instructions. Lay persons are further encouraged to perform continuous hands only CPR at a minimum until M's arrival, an upper boundary for the number of chest. Compressions was added at 120 per minute making the current recommendation 100 to 120 per minute. The 2010 guidelines only stated 100 plus per minute, an upper boundary on the depth of chest compressions was added at 2.4 inches, making the current recommendation 2 to 2.4 inches. The 2010 guidelines only stated at least 2 inches, added BLS and lay person administration of naloxone for suspected opiate overdoses, for simplicity, vasopressin was removed from the cardiac arrest algorithm, waveform capnography was further emphasized and an ETCO2 of less than 10 mmHg after 20 minutes of resuscitation was added as legitimate factor in the decision to terminate resuscitation. Targeted temperature management was further refined with a new goal range 32 to 36 degrees C, routine atropine. Use in intubations is no longer recommended unless there is a high risk for bradycardia. The OHCA and IHCA and chain also has been added as different ones. Separate chains of survival have been recommended that identify the different pathways of care for patients who experience cardiac arrest in the hospital as distinct from out-of-hospital settings.